Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at one of the most exciting programs that you'll ever write and you'll rewrite it many times. It's the Hello World program. And this is a classic program where you get to get introduced to the programming language that you're using. And oftentimes it's a good first program to write just to make sure that things are set up, which if you haven't seen the previous videos that I've posted, uh, that's about setting up your environment on Windows, Linux, and Mac, for instance. So go ahead and check out those in the playlist, which is linked in the description below. But with that said, I want to go ahead and just jump into our Hello World program and get you writing some D and we'll talk about it in a little bit more depth here so you get to know about some of the philosophies and how the D programming language works. So with that said, let's go ahead and open up a text editor and just have a hello.d program here. And I'm just going to start writing this program here. Now, when typically we write programs in the D programming language, it's a general purpose language, but it has different paradigms, whether it's a sort of procedural uh, or object oriented or functional style. But what we're going to focus on right now is just writing a function. And the classic function where we have an entry point into a program is main. So this is our uh, starting point starting point or entry into a D program. Now behind the scenes, there might be other stuff that's actually going on. And if for folks who have done perhaps a little bit of assembly programming, you might know uh, where the true sort of entry points are in a program. But for general D programming language uh, programs that we write, this is where we're going to be starting and this was where you can focus. And if you're coming from a background of say Java, C or C++, this is going to be relatively familiar. All right, so now that we've got our entry point, let's actually do something. In the classic Hello World program, we want to write out some text to the screen. So how do we do this? Well, we need some functionality to do this. And our goal is just to print or echo something out. So if I can go ahead and uh, do this on the terminal, right? We just want to echo out hello world and get that text output to the screen. So in order to do this, we're going to need some mechanism for uh, output. So in order to do that, I'm going to import in a library that's going to help us do this. So I'm going to import standard standard IO. Okay, so this comes from our standard library and the standard input and output library. That's what STDIO stands for. So let's just go ahead and give you a little uh, cheat sheet here that anytime that you see uh, STD, it's usually pronounced stood or short for standard. Okay. Uh, and then anytime you see IO, that usually means uh, input, output, just so you're on the same page. And this is usually consistent across many other programming languages. And for those folks who have come from a C background, again, standard IO is going to look familiar, which again is something that D programming language does a nice job of doing, utilizing a lot of your previous knowledge. Okay, so with that said, let's just go ahead and get to the point and write our uh, hello here. So we have a function available called write line. And let's just go ahead and write hello D uh, language and a semicolon which appears after um, any sort of uh, function call here. So we're calling into some function write line that I'm telling you we've imported into our program. So more on that in a moment, but let's just go ahead and see if this works. So as a reminder for how we compile this thing, DMD is the compiler I'm going to use. You could use LDC or GDC or maybe other compilers that you'd want to use with D like the snazzy compiler um, and the source file. Let's go ahead and just output this as prog and we'll go ahead and just run it and success. It works and you can now consider yourself a successful D programmer at this point. You're able to make some progress. All right, so again, this is our program here and it's probably enough at this point if you just wanna move on and get to the next lessons, uh, learn more D, that's okay. But just to give you a little bit more intuition about what's going on, let's talk about this import statement here and what's going on. So import is very similar um, and I'll go ahead and just make a note here uh, it's similar to include in C and C++, okay? As well as if you've seen import in Python or Java. The idea is, and you can think about this, is you have a library here. So I'm just going to draw a bookshelf here. And in our shelves, we have a bunch of different maybe libraries that have been grouped together. So this is the standard. And this is just one shelf in a series of bookshelves. So for example, you might have another bookshelf here, maybe core features or, you know, etc. features uh, that, you know, are getting categorized or whatever. And this has some amount of libraries here. Now, the one that we've brought in here is called standard 
I O, which I'll try my best to write uh, sideways here, but that's where it is here. Uh, that's this library here and where it's found. And again, within this book, if you could imagine picking out in a library, it tells you about these functions that exist, how they're implemented, and how to actually uh, do this procedure that we want to do, which is output text onto our screen. So that's the basic idea. Now, what's cool about the deep programming language and what it's learned from other uh, languages that were its predecessor is that we don't have to import things outside of the scope. That is to say, when I put this import here outside of these curly braces, like such, uh, it's available everywhere. So sometimes I might want that, but sometimes I might just say, hey, within our main function, that's the only place where we want to be bringing in this sort of library here. So that's actually really powerful and can help us keep our code sort of clean. Again, this will become more important as you write bigger and bigger programs. But I just want to go ahead and demonstrate that if I save this and I run it again, I can uh, still get the same output here by just importing this as long as I import before I actually use this function here. And the other thing that's kind of interesting that you can do is you can say, well, you know, I brought in this big book from this bookshelf and maybe it has other things related to standard input and output. You know, we can write out information. Maybe we can read in information or work with files. And in fact, all that sort of stuff is in this uh, book here. Again, if you've been to a library recently and you grab a book, there is usually not just one page of information. There's many different things here. So what we can do here in this import is specify what functions or things we actually want from the library. So maybe I can just bring in right line, for example. And again, if I compile this and run it, you'll see that it works just fine. OK, so that's the idea that we can sort of pick and choose and just bring in the necessary functionality. This can often be useful if you're trying to sort of optimize what functions are brought in or just be very clear about what you're using in specific libraries. Because, for example, you might have other libraries that can write out information and you might want to do things in different ways. All right, so that's a little bit more in depth probably than you're used to for your Hello World. Uh, but I want to give you sort of uh, the D programming language at a few different levels since I know we have learners at many different um, levels here. So again, if you just want to get Hello World working, something like this is totally fine and you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson. All right, folks. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed the Hello World to the D programming language. And you can see my enthusiasm about the language because they really thought about a lot of things here. And even little things like import and bringing in libraries, that's something that we're going to be doing frequently. So I want you to just understand a little bit more about that feature. All right, folks, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and comment below if you have other questions about Hello World. It's a classic program. Let me know what other languages you've written Hello World in, or maybe not all of them, but the number of times you've written Hello World would be interesting. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you can't see some, uh, you don't miss those later lessons on the deprogramming language where we talk about uh, everything else from basic to advanced features. We'll see you there very soon.